Hey friends, we have some news from our sponsor, Text Control. They just released version 32 of their document processing library, which includes new core functionality such as document footnotes, SVG export, and more. You can integrate document editing, signing, collaboration, and PDF processing into your ASP.NET Core and Angular applications with TX Text Control. These powerful libraries will let your developer teams focus on their core competencies, while Text Control handles your digital document processing. Check out all the new features and see the technologies live in action by visiting the demo at demos.textcontrol.com. That's demos.textcontrol.com. Hi, I'm Scott Hansel, and this is another episode of Hansel Minutes. Today, I'm talking with Dr. Sally Bachbach. She is a principal engineer at Splunk. She's a PhD from Clemson. How are you? I'm doing well. How about you? I am very well, and I'm excited to be chatting with you today. I, um, you're just such a prolific writer and researcher, and you've done so much in the space. I, I just love talking with people with as much experience as you have. You've worked at NetApp. You now work at Splunk. But you also have a lot of interest in large distributed systems, and particularly in the spaces of testing and debugging. And I've been trying to understand open telemetry in these large distributed systems, and I know that's a space that you uh, have worked in. Um, yeah. So first, thanks for having me. It's it's pretty exciting to to be on your podcast. I've been a fan for a while. Yeah. So my journey with observability and open telemetry started only two years ago when I joined Splunk. Before Splunk, I was at NetApp working on uh, data storage. So we had our own operating system. So observability was not really a thing. So it's mostly monitoring and uh, the traditional debugging things and looking at cores. And it was very, very different. But my last two years at NetApp, I started working more on Kubernetes. And that's when things have really changed. And I started uh, looking at like, wow, the debugging these things is hard. Correlating things is hard. Figuring out where the problem is is also hard. And uh, that kind of started planting a seed in my head. I was like, well, I want, I want to get more experience in large distributed system and also getting more into observability. And so that's how I ended up Splunk. And also the operating system and uh, knowledge came in handy as well. But you had also proposed a course on distributed computing and written a paper on that into as far back as 2007. So you've thought about these these systems for quite a while. Yes. Yeah, so I used to work in uh, sensor networks, and uh, the nature of it was very uh, distributed, but at um, it was different. So in terms of having these large, beefy machines or VMs, we had these tiny uh, sensors that are very resource constrained. And they are very, very distributed because you can just throw them in a field, a whole bunch of them, and they communicate together. They built a mesh, basically. It's kind of like the um, underlying technology behind uh, Internet of Things. Uh -huh. That's basically what it was. And then when I was working on it, um, we thought, well, this stuff isn't really taught at the time. Uh, when I was in grad school, you don't have a whole lot of classes available. And so that's when we... Uh, propose a class to teach these techniques and these concepts. Is there a lot of parallels between distributed nodes where that node might be a Kubernetes node or it might be a tiny device that just happens to have a lot of latency because it's far away in a farmer's field somewhere? That's a great uh, one to think about. So these sensors, when I was working on them, they're, they can come and go. And so if you think about Kubernetes pods, for example, uh, if you're scaling, you can have some think about joining the network and not. So you can have more pods, fewer pods. Some of them are ephemeral. Some of them might disappear uh, depending on your autoscaler, for example. These were similar. The Also, each one is its own thing with it doing its own thing, not knowing about the other neighbors either. So that was also another similarity. The focus on open telemetry and the concept of just observability in software engineering is understanding the state of a system by observing its external outputs. I grew up in a time when we were always try to observe internal state by attaching a debugger. And I'm noticing amongst my peers that there are those that do basically printf debugging 
And then there are those who attach a debugger. And I, I'm kind of wondering in my mind when that started. And I, I, I've noticed that a lot of Kubernetes and distributed people don't really do a lot of attach a debugger type work. They really love their logs. They love their observability. Uh, I, yeah. I, I don't really have a question there, but I've just, I noticed that about us. Yeah, I mean, I've, I've had my fair share of both. <laughs> and uh, the attaching a debugger will take you so far, uh, especially if, if it's something, if you're talking about microservices, at some point, you're not going to be, like your request is not even going to be handled by your pod. And so there is no debugger to attach to because <laughs> it's now out of your, your process, right? So you start looking at like, well, maybe we can have logs and maybe we can correlate them and we can kind of weave a story of, of my request, for example. So I had my fair share of attaching debuggers, but uh, I still do as I'm working on like smaller pieces. But yeah, there are like places and tools for each thing. Well, what you, you mentioned in your journey to observability that you started working on a monolith and you were using both debugging techniques, but also monitoring at some point, that's kind of when you came to the religion of like, wait a second, telemetry is really important and in instrumenting your applications. It's not a small investment, but it's crucial. Yeah, it's definitely a crucial. And there is this misconception that monitoring and telemetry is observability, and it's not. So if you think about telemetry and monitoring, it's more reactive. And so you already understand so much of the system that you can figure things out after the fact, or you can get involved after an issue happens. But the goal of observability is to be able to reason about your system. And like you mentioned, looking at its internal state, and you want to be able to ask questions that at the time you're instrumenting your code, you don't even think about. That becomes a little tricky of what questions may I think about in the future? And do I have instrumentation to help me do that? Uh, and that is lacking with monitoring and telemetry, but it is something that observability would afford you. That is a really great way of putting it. And my, my brain is trying to process what you just said. That's so interesting because you're right. If something goes wrong and you can answer why it went wrong without having to do additional instrumentation, then you've succeeded is what I'm hearing you say. Yeah, like I, I tried to think about monitoring versus observability of one is reactive and one is proactive more. So monitoring the site has gone down or which one is proactive? Which one is, explain that again. So monitoring, you're detecting the problem when it happens. So it, the problem has already happened. Okay. But observability, you're putting in all the instrumentation. Yes, it will definitely help you in figuring out like reactive what issue happened, but you can also, you're kind of investing in your future self of being able to answer questions that mm. you may not even know existed at the time. Okay, I'm understanding now. Okay, so monitoring, you know, you can collect, you can analyze data, you can look at these predefined set of metrics and logs, yes. react to something going wrong, the disk is at 100%, whatever. Yep. But with observability, you, it's also that you're understanding, you're truly grokking what's happening in that system's internal state. Yeah. And then can look, at, you don't have to do any additional testing, no additional coding. Yes, that's the goal. That yeah. is the goal. Okay, if, if yes. you've succeeded, that is the trick, Yes, right? that is the goal, yes. Okay. How often does that happen, though? Because you've called out before what a huge investment that is. Is this like back in the day, remember test-driven development, where they were like, test all the time, write tests all the time, like you can't have enough tests? Is the same thing happening in observability? Should I just instrument everything, every line? I mean, like, when, what's too much telemetry and what's the right amount of instrument? Yeah, that's one of those things that is uh, an art more than a science, I think. Well, same thing with unit tests. Like, you can, at some point, you have to put a line and say, we're done here and we need to ship. Uh, and then you can always like iterate. And that's one thing, for example, with NetApp, when we worked in an operating system, if you think about it, how often do you upgrade your operating system at home? Not every day. Mm -hmm. But if you're hosting a SaaS, then yeah, you might be pushing your code to production multiple times a day or multiple times a week. These are kind of different things to think about. It makes me think about when a boss of mine many, many years ago learned about code coverage and they just picked a number and they were like 95% code. And I was like, eh. 
Yeah. You know, and, they, and that was just an arbitrary number that they wanted. And then we, we had a build server and they said, you have to have this much code coverage. But we weren't thinking about the hot path. We weren't thinking about the business problem. It was just a number that they made up. Yes. It sounds like that would be an unhealthy way to think about telemetry. Uh, yes. Like you definitely want to help your future self, but at the same time, there is cost, right? So how much is too much is also like, I mean, if I'm going to instrument every single thing, then then I'm going to be inundated with data then it's going to be counterintuitive, really. And as I start querying my data, then maybe all the traces I'm sending, that's that's too much. It's one of those things of, are you creating a haystack where you can't find the needle? Or how, how big is your haystack? That is a really good analogy. I love that. That's exactly what it is. It's like, you know, I have no hay at all. Yeah. Where am I going to hide my needles? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> That is great. Okay. So then I want to understand where open telemetry comes in because in the past, when I worked on large distributed systems, we were all about the log files and every process, because it was a big distributed banking system, had a, had a separate uh, log file and it was like process name dash some timestamp dot log and they were spread all over creation. And we thought we were so clever. And then when everything went bad, you jump into the log files and try to come up with some kind of a correlation ID. Yeah. So if you think about there are different observability vendors in the industry. And so if you want to instrument your code, you can use their proprietary libraries, which, like we said, we already established that's an investment to instrument your code. Well, your CTO or CEO or whatever said, well, we're not going to use that vendor anymore. We're going to use another vendor. So now you as an engineer have to go back and instrument your code with this new bespoke library of the new vendor. That's a lot. You're, you're wasting resources. Uh, you're wasting time. You're wasting engineering effort where you can be doing something else. And so open telemetry comes in where it says, we're going to establish a standard. You're going to instrument your code once using open telemetry. And then... If you want to use another vendor, then you don't have to re-instrument your code, which is great for engineers, right? You do this investment once, yeah, of course, you're going to iterate and, and modify things. But that initial investment is a one-time thing, uh, which is, is great. Mm -hmm. And the importance of being vendor neutral is important, certainly within open source, but also any observability framework, you're not going to want to switch. But then I presume that a vendor could then build on top of it with their own herbs and spices. Absolutely. Yes. Yes. And that's basically what would make one vendor, not necessarily better, but more, fitting more use cases to, yeah. yeah, to different customers. Yes. Okay. So then open telemetry was an incubator within the cloud native computing foundation and really kind of like popped once all of these distributed systems, particularly Kubernetes of, of note started happening. People were like, wow, this is too much. And the amount of data was huge. Like my, our log files were, you know, megabytes, but the data and then metrics and then traces. Yes. If you think about it, especially with like with microservices and Kubernetes, when I was at NetApp, for example, and there's a problem, I can maybe SSH into a machine and see what the problem is. Or I have a core that I can look at uh, and I can look at the different things. And with Kubernetes, that's not necessarily the case. So unless you're harvesting the logs and pushing them somewhere, your pod is gone and everything with it is gone. Uh, and so, so observability tries to help you kind of reason about all these different things. Yeah, that's a good point. And it also calls out that a lot of these compute units of work are ephemeral in nature. Yes. Not just a node, but a, uh, a function. And, exactly. And, and some kind of a function as a service situation. Totally. Yes, I agree. Okay, so then when I was doing, you know, test-driven development or doing CI/CD, we used to call them build servers, there was always the knee-jerk reaction to go and whatever all the things, test-driven development, all the things, or build server, all the things. Is it important to have a culture around observability, or should I just go in and impl implement open telemetry and then just run, 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 and get everyone to do all the things? It's not just run, run, run. Like if you think about unit tests, like unit tests has a, a great value, right? So it's not just that gives you a little bit of confidence of, hey, I have some code coverage. I kind of have a level of confidence of my code is doing what it's supposed to do. But also it helps you reason about your code. So as you're writing unit tests, like, hmm, am I using the right abstractions? Because I have, if I have my code tightly coupled, then 
unit testing, it is not going to be easy. And so that helps you to take a step back and think about your design decisions. And I feel obs- observability is the same way. But again, there is the balance of you need to ship at a certain point because businesses are there to make money and they need to make products available and customers have requirements. There is definitely that balance, but you want to create the culture of observability helps you have a better product overall, because even if like outages happen, bugs exist because we don't write perfect code. Uh, So there are a lot of things that are out of our control as well. Um, especially when you have managed services and and hosted services, your goal is to be able to solve problems quickly. So observability helps you with that. So having a culture around, hey, we're we're not just going to ship, but we're also want to be able to have a solid product that is reliable, that we can recover quickly when issues happen, because they will happen. So you want to build that culture. It's not just about let's just crank out code and push to production. Mm -hmm. So then it sounds like having the right data and collecting the right data is important. Collecting the right data, but also uh, it's not just the data, not just even like within engineering. You also want your management chain to be aware because that is time that you're investing, not writing the actual code that's going to give customers whatever behavior they want, right? Mm. The idea of getting this into the brain of the team and having the team's culture such that it is natural to start thinking about observability, then of course, plugging in something like open telemetry also makes me wonder about privacy and how uh, you could accidentally leak, I don't know, credit cards or social security numbers or passwords and things like that. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Like there, you can go through data cleansing phases and like one thing, one where instrumenting, for example, we're very mindful of what data we can put like you're you're not going to put any personal identifying information in that it's more for your system debugging so even when we were doing monitoring for netapp for example we were also not having anything that is customer data being stored anywhere you're definitely being mindful of that and if there's anything that might be the case we also catch that and like code reviews for example That's also another thing to make sure you have a culture of of good code reviews as well. That's unrelated to observability, just general development as well. I'm trying to think about how you would sell this to management, though, because I feel like we're already trying to convince them that we need to do more testing. We're already trying to convince them we need more DevOps. All of them are going to look at something like observability as yet another thing that doesn't help my business. These are, you know, cross-cutting concerns. Yes, that's an excellent question. So it's easier to show disasters as a way to say, if we had observability, that would have helped us to recover earlier or faster, or uh, we wouldn't have run into this issue to begin with because we would have caught it before it even reached a customer. These are things that you can argue about. It definitely helps to have people higher up who believe in that as well. And that's mm. something that's really good at, at Splunk is we are in observability, so we dog food our own products. <laughs> that's a great point. I presume that if anything is really observable, it would be Splunk products. Yeah. It would be deeply <laughs> yeah. observable because, yeah. So then that probably changes culture. That changes team culture. Uh, and if you're on call, the culture of being on call, how does, how does that change your view about the right way to build software? Wow. Yes. At NetApp, like if you're a software engineer, you were very, very sheltered from production because we don't really have production because we give our customers an operating system and they have their own production. So we didn't have a culture of on-call at all. Yes, yeah, so I, would, I would deal with customer issues, but these are more a regular, hey, support contacted me and said there's an issue that I need to look at. And so when I moved to Splunk, now we have dev on production. We push to production. We support our service. We have our uptime and all our SLOs are met. And so that made me think about how can I not just build something that is more resilient, but how do I help myself when I wake up at two o'clock in the morning because I got paged? How can I first minimize that? And because I really like my uninterrupted sleep. And how do I go back to bed quickly? (laughs) To do that, I want to make sure that, again, I help my future self. So it's more out of selfishness that 
wait, I need to make sure that I'm building something solid and I need to invest in all the different ecosystem that is going to help me solve any issue quickly. I think that thinking about your future self is like a really great quality that any software engineer could have, right? Like who are the comments for? Well, that's for future me. Yes. Right. Who is the test for future me? Who's the observability for future me? Totally. Yes. And one of the things that like before Splunk, I was very detached from like, for example, the support. We, I didn't see what the system was doing in production. But now that I'm on call, I see exactly what's going on. <laughs> People hate being on call, though. But what you're saying is that being on call makes you a better engineer. It did. I have so much empathy now to my my fellow. I love that you said that. I was going to say empathy because, you know, I've talked about this before on the show. And sometimes people think I'm squishy. Empathy is just completely underrated within software engineering because support person is going to appreciate the work that you put into instrumenting your code. Yes, absolutely. Yes. Do you believe in like dev owning service, like that the dev should have a, we always talk about full stack developers. And I don't think honestly, full stack development is a thing because the stack is too deep. Yes. It's too much. Yeah. That said though, I love taking devs and having them live on a project. Like you're going to carry the pager for a month and you're going to work on that. And now you're going to do ops and now you're going to do SRE because it builds empathy as they roam around the business. Being exposed to production is I think is is very important. You still want to have expertise on something, though. I will run my service. I will own my service, but I'm not going to be as good as an SRE who's running some Kafka cluster, right? Of course. Like you said, the stack is too deep. It's not just the stack of software. It's also all the different pieces that make a product successful. Okay. I, I usually use the analogy of being of a Swiss army knife. Yep. Because it's like, it's just a lousy tool. It's a tiny pair of scissors. It's not a very good corkscrew. Yep. That's me as an engineer, right? Like I, I have a lot of little skills that I'm not very good at, but you have to be a T-shaped developer. You have to have deep in something. Yes. Yeah. I agree. Yeah, absolutely. So then open telemetry as a project and observability as a concept has, you know, kind of lit the uh, distributed engineering a world on fire, it must be easy then to hire observability experts and engineers, right? No, not at all. Like if you think about it, I joined Splunk two years ago. And one of the things when I was interviewing, I said, hey, I did some monitoring just by being at NetApp, but I don't know much about observability. And here I am with years and years of experience. And so they were like, yeah, you'll learn it. There aren't many people around. Like if you think about it, observability is a new thing. Open telemetry is new. That stuff isn't really taught at school much uh, or boot camp. If you're yourself working as a hobby, it's not something that many people do side quests in either, right? That's a really great point. You know, I, I know that my blog is not a Kubernetes system, but it does run in, in the cloud and it has for years and it does run in a container as does the podcast. And it's small, but as the single employee of Hanselman.com, yeah. I have to carry the pager. And there's just nothing like running a site. If it's your church or your mosque, or if it's your kid's little league, make a website and try to keep it up for 24 hours and you will learn so much. But you're right. People don't have those side quests enough. I like that. I like keeping my site up. I've actually stepped out of movie theaters where I've got the alert of like from Pingdom of like, oh, the site's down. How do I get my blog back up from my phone? Or, you know, I'm SSHing into production. Oh, wow, that's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> I just, it, it gives you, it gives you empathy. It gives you perspective. It gives you a lot. Yeah. I would be a little sad if someone had a 10 or 20 year career, but they never got to touch production. Yes, I agree. But then at the same time, it's not everyone can do everything. And yeah, I, I, it's a challenge. I don't want to gatekeep, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I appreciate what you're saying. Like the thing that's challenging, of course, about having a podcast is that if you make a declarative statement, any one of them taken out of context can become sure. a, little, a little wonderful uh, thing that someone tweets and then you're in trouble. Yes. yes. You're that a person of the day. Yeah, exactly. But I guess I'm saying that like one of the things that I've advocated for, and I'm interested in your opinion is know what level you operate at and then occasionally go one level below just to remind yourself what that feels like. You no, know, change a tire. Yes. And then go, okay. I don't like changing tires. I'm going to hire somebody to change a tire. Absolutely. Yes. Yes. But at the same time, if you get stranded at the side of the road, you know how to change a tire. That exact. So, so then the question is for me, 
how much do I need to know about observability and open telemetry so that it is there to help me, but I may not become an expert who can, you know, implement it into an organization myself. Yeah. You can always start small, right? Like you don't have to do everything. And Well, that's a great point. Could I, int- I could go and make my podcast, my tiny little thing, my little five page podcast observable. Yes, absolutely. And then maybe would that be a reasonable way for folks that are listening to then go and share their journey with maybe their company and go to their boss and say, hey, you know, I've been toying with observability and I think we should implement it here at the company. Yeah, absolutely. And there are like, there are really good documentation out there for open telemetry and how to instrument your code. And there's also, if you want something small, there is auto instrumentation, which will take you so far, but Hmm. you can do a zero config auto instrumentation for the languages that we use. And that can be a good start to just kind of get your feet wet. Really? And that you think that, that that's a good thing? Like, I know I could generate unit tests as well, but I always wonder to myself how far auto-generation could take me. Yeah, I mean, it would take you so far, but then at the same time, you still have your own logic that you want to instrument. But it's definitely, like you said, how do I start? That would be a great place to start. Yeah, well, that's really good advice. I, I really appreciate you taking the time to get me up to speed and uh, help me, who I'm quite a bit earlier than you are in my journey to observability. But I appreciate the work that you do and for spending time with me today. Yeah, thank you for having me. It's been fun chatting with you today. All right. We've been chatting with Dr. Sally Wahba, and you can check her out on social media. And you can also feel free to go learn about OpenTelemetry at opentelemetry.io. And uh, you know, if you feel like it, look at the Splunk cloud platform at splunk.com. This has been another episode of Hansel Minutes, and we'll see you again next week.